Hello peoples! In today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. There are already a whole bunch of videos out there telling you how to do a CCU chain and they go from a seed ship or starter ship in a linear fashion to your end ship. That ship that you know is higher end costs a lot more money. These are all really good but the one thing that I've noticed is that they don't tell you how to take advantage of the sales that CIG will offer throughout the year. They also don't tell you how to backfill a CCU chain from your end ship to the seed ship, which is something that you will end up doing quite a lot if you want to take full advantage of the sales. A good example is the IAE sale that we have going on right now. The other thing that I want to cover is how to keep everything organized to make sure that you always know what ships you need to buy and if you have any holes in your CCU chain that need to be filled. So we're going to have to look at a spreadsheet, unfortunately, because that's how I organize mine. But I'm also going to explain what to do, what not to do when purchasing CCUs, and how to backfill that chain based on what ships are up for sale. Some things to keep in the back of your mind. One, you need to be patient and wait for the sales because that's the only way that you're going to maximize your savings. Two, you will need a way to track all of your CCUs that you've purchased. The more that you have, the harder it is going to be to keep track of, and you're just not going to be able to use your hanger at the website to do it. It's just it's a horrible way of trying to keep track. Three, CIG will occasionally increase the value of a ship and it will end up killing the CCU upgrade that you bought. What do you do then? And then number four, to get the best deals, you're going to have to backfill most of your CCU chains because you just don't know what CIG is going to put up for a sale. So you have to do a little bit of predicting or gambling. Either way, it's going to work out in your favor. So sit back, relax, get yourself a drink, a snack. Get comfortable because this is going to be a little bit of a long video, I'm afraid. But hopefully, it'll end up saving you a lot of money in the long run. So let's get to it. Okay, so CCU stands for Cross Chassis Upgrade. Basically, CIG term. It's really just a ship upgrade. That's all it is. I'm sure you're familiar with how a standard CCU upgrade works. You go from one ship that is cheaper to another ship that is more expensive and you pay the full price. You get that more expensive ship through the standard upgrade offer. There's absolutely no savings whatsoever. So if you have a $120 ship, you're going to a $135 ship. Well, basically a standard upgrade means that it's going to cost you 15 bucks out of your pocket. Now, there is a time and a place to use that, but what we want to do is get some more savings. That's where the Warbond CCU comes into play. So typically, a Warbond CCU means that CIG is going to give you a ship of a certain value, but you get to pay less, so you get a discount. It's that simple. So if you have that ship that's 120 bucks and there's a Warbond CCU to a ship of 135 you can maybe purchase it for $5.00. Instead of the normal 15 you get a $10 discount. It's that simple. There is a catch, though. Warbond upgrades, you have to use cash in order to get the discount. For a standard upgrade, you can pay with cash or you can use store credit. So here, we've got our standard upgrade. We're going from a $120 Nova ground vehicle to a Cutlass Red. Currently, there is no Warbond for it. Cutlass Red is $135, bucks, so it's going to cost you $15 in order to get to that Cutlass Red. Simple. Okay, time to get organized. Now you really do need to keep track of all your CCUs and your CCU chains. You can write it down in a book, you can use Google Sheets, in my case I'm using Excel as you can see here, whatever works for you, but you need to be able to see what you have and what you don't. As you can see, Excel here, I like to color code everything, it helps with my OCD. So let's explain this sheet just a little bit so that maybe you can make something up on your own. As you can see in column B, I have my seed ship. The cheapest ship and moving to the right I have my first second third fourth fifth CCU all the way up to the end ship which is going to be the most expensive and potentially what I want to get in the future I have the prices and the war bond discount for each upgrade basically if the text is black it's a war bond I also type in war bond there and if the text is red it's a standard CCU so no savings if the war bond discount price is in green, then I've already purchased it. And if it's in red, I need to get it. It's that simple. Now this works for me. You need to come up with something that works for you. Now I've been gathering CCUs for the past three years or so and filled out this sheet. So again, it does take you some time. But this is how I purchase new ships in the game. I've got a ton of CCUs and I don't pay full price for any ship. 
Now let me tell you, you can't simply rely upon the hanger module on the website to keep track of your CCUs once you have more than a handful. It will become too unwieldy. You're just not going to be able to do it. So, as you can see here, I have some CCU chains that are already completed and need to be executed, but I haven't done it yet. So let's take a look at this one right here. I start off with the Spartan concept vehicle that gave me $80 for a cost of $65. So that's $15 savings right off the bat. From there, I went to a Cutlass Black before it went up in price using a standard CCU upgrade, $20 to get $100 worth of ship. And then from that, as you can see, we go to the Nova Tank and then onto the Cutlass Red and then finally onto the SRV for $150. Again, this is before CIG decided to raise the SRV during IAE to 165. So I actually got another increase if you think about it. I paid $150 for an SRV and then CIG decided to bump it up another 15. So I really have $165 worth of ship that I could potentially upgrade into something else if I'm not satisfied with the SRV. Works out pretty good, don't you think? Okay, so let's go ahead and execute this game package and show you the upgrade. Now, the group over at InfraRunners, Execute and Algrid, went through this last year, but I'm going to go over it again just so that everything is kind of in one video, at least for me. So we're going to select our Spartan package here. Notice that it is 65, right? Got it for a big discount. Um, we have lifetime insurance on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to organize by my upgrades so that I just have upgrades in there, not everything else. And I already know that most of my upgrades that I'm going to execute is on page five. So I'm going to jump right to that. And I'm going to pick the Spartan 2 Cutlass Black Standard Edition upgrade. Notice that it's 20 bucks. And what we're going to do is apply this upgrade. Now, when you apply the upgrade, if you have multiple game packages that have the same ship, make sure you select the game package that you want, or I should say the ship package that you want. Type in your password, hit apply. Once you do that, the CCU goes away and that ship package has been upgraded to the new ship. So in this case, the Cuddy Black. Notice it shows Cuddy Black there. If you ever need to get the original ship back, the only way to do it is to melt that ship package and then buy it back. You will get the original ship, but you will lose all of your upgrades. Whatever you have paid for, you will get back in store credit. So let's say that game package gets upgraded to, you know, a $800 ship. When you melt it, you'll get the $800 back. So here we're going to do the next upgrade, which is Cuddy Black to the Nova. Again, 10 bucks. So now we have the Nova tank there. Again, apply it to the correct package if you have more than one, because if you mess up, uh, you'll split your upgrades and you won't be a very happy camper there. Okay. Okay, we're going to hit next. Do the thing with the password, hit apply, and now I have a Nova Tank instead of a Cuddy Black. That easy. So we're going to continue with these upgrades. Uh, basically, we're going to go from the Nova Tank to the Cuddy Red. This was a War Bond. I believe this one only cost five bucks. Yeah, it only cost five bucks, so I got some decent savings there. We're going to apply this one just like we've done the whole time. Pick the right you know, ship package and hit apply. And we've got one more to do, and that's going to be the Cuddy Red to the SRV. Now, the Cuddy Red to SRV was a standard upgrade back when the SRV was only 150 bucks. So the price is reflected in that. Bear in mind that as of IAE right now, uh, the SRV is up to $165, so I automatically, with this upgrade, have increased the value of this package by $15, and I didn't have to do anything. I just had to wait for CIG to up the price, which they will do with concept ships. All right. So now what we're going to do is uh, sort off of standalone ships, and we're going to go back and just verify. You can see here that my Spartan package has been upgraded. It says SRV. I have lifetime insurance, which is great. And if we go in and check the value of the exchange, it should reflect the savings for the CCUs and the war bond, which is 115 So I only spent $115 for a $165 ship, or during 
you know, the original launch there. I don't know if that was 150 at original launch. It might have been 130. But I'm still under the original price of the SRV when it was offered. So now let's go back to our spreadsheet and let's see how we fill in some holes because as you can see here on the bottom CCU chain where I'm going from the hover quad to the Gladius, I have an upgrade to some, you know, unknown chip. There's just a $120 value there to kind of give me an idea of what I need to upgrade to. And then we go to the SRV. Notice that it's $150. That's because previously the SRV was listed for $150 as an upgrade. And I filled this out before CIG decided to up the SRV to $165. So I'm kind of in a little bit of a pickle. And here's why. Previously during the week, I had to backfill the uh, A1 Spirit to Santoki I to Mercury Star Runner to Retaliator Bomber. So I picked up on November 18th a Sabre to A1 Spirit because you have to have something to upgrade from and the Sabre is always available. So I picked the Sabre to A1 Spirit Warbond and I saved myself 25 bucks on the A1 Spirit. Then on the same day, I upgraded the A1 Spirit to the Santoki I War Bond. Now this one gave me $15 off. You can see here it was purchased on November 18th. Now the following upgrade, I have to get to the Mercury. And it just so happens that the Mercury was on War Bond on the 19th. So everything fell in, the stars were aligned, and I went from the Santoki I to the Mercury uh, Star Warner war bond saved myself another 20 bucks now the reason why i had to do that is because i had picked up the retaliator bomber it was a standard upgrade and i had to upgrade from a mercury star runner because again you have to pick the ship that you're upgrading from now that just means that we have to fill back in the hole that we have from the gladius and it turns out that right now we have the c1 spirit up for war bond so what I'm going to be able to do is do a upgrade from Gladius to C1 Spirit. It's going to cost me $20 for the upgrade. And now I've filled in that hole. I now have a ship that's worth $125. From the C1 Spirit, I'm now going to get a War Bond upgrade to the SRV because even though it went up in price, CIG has it on for war bond sale. And funny enough, even though it's 165, the war bond saves 15 bucks. So I'm back down to what I had originally thought the price would be, which is 150. So here we've got our uh, jump from the C1 Spirit to the SRV. And now I can plug in from the SRV to the Saber. And because we're only $5 away from $170 value, the Sabre upgrade is only going to be 5 bucks, And it's a standard upgrade. But that's what we're going to end up going with because, number one, the Sabre is always available. And I need a Sabre to complete the rest of the chain. I hope that all makes sense to you. Um, if you have to just kind of like review it real quick because it can be a little confusing. Hopefully I've done a good enough job to where you kind of get what we're working towards when we're trying to backfill these CCUs. You do have to be pretty flexible sometimes. And the reason why is because part of my CCU upgrading, I was backfilling from the Retaliator Bomber. And so I was locked into having to get the Mercury Star Runner as a uh, part of that backfill okay i hope that's clear <laughs> let's move on so now i've updated my spreadsheet to reflect all of the changes that we made as you can see we have a nice chain now that goes from the hover quad to the gladius to the c1 spirit to the srv those are all war bond we had to use a standard upgrade from the war bond uh, srv to the saber and then we complete our chain a little bit further out by going from the Sabre to the A1 Spirit, the Santoki I, the Mercury Star Runner, again, all war bonds. And then we have to go to a standard upgrade from the Retaliator Bomber. Now, 
if the retaliator bomber goes on war bond, it's 275 bucks. We can make some educated guess here. At a $275 price point, if they put the retaliator bomber on war bond, they're going to pretty much reduce it by probably 30 or 40 bucks. Therefore, we're not going to be able to do a war bond from the Mercury Star Runner up to the um, Retaliator because it's going to be below the price of our upgrade ship. So we're going to have to eat that one, but that's okay. We still have a whole lot of savings here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to project the um, rest of my spreadsheet out here. So let's take a look now. Okay, so now we're looking at the very end of my CCU chains. So looking at the Retaliator Bomber, uh, we go to the Eclipse. That's a good little war bond. Then we go from there to the Gemini. That's a standard upgrade. And you're saying, well, geez, man, that sucks. It's 40 bucks. Well, here's the neat thing about my CCU upgrades. You can use store credit to purchase a standard upgrade. All of the CCU upgrades that are standard, the ones that are in red text, I've purchased with store credit. Now, I've built up my store credit over time because what happens is when a um, CCU, standard CCU um, that I've used store credit to purchase comes up on war bond and I can get savings, I just simply melt that standard CCU and then I purchase the replacement, which is that war bond. Okay? So you get your savings and then you you know, get to use your store credit. And so I've built up my store credit over a number of years to where I can pretty much purchase most of these CCU standard, you know, upgrades using nothing but store credit. So no money really comes out of my pocket. Now, if you notice, I actually have a really good upgrade here. So previously we talked about how CIG uh, moved the SRV from a $150 ship to a $165 ship. They increased it. In this case, those of you that got an eagle eye, you've noticed that I'm going from a Gemini, which is a $340 ship, to a Hull C. This is back when the Hull C was $350. So it cost me $10 to go to the Hull C. Okay. But CIG has increased the price of the whole C up to $500. So even though it's not a war bond, what I ended up doing is I put this as a major plus. I am now saving $160 because the whole C is worth $500 now. I paid $10. Now I can make that jump from the whole C to the M2 Hercules. It only cost me $20. And if I want to go on to, let's say, the Liberator, the Carrick, or the Perseus, I can. I can do a linear upgrade now. It's going to be pretty easy. I just wait for some of these ships to come on, you know, sail with a war bond. Now, at the time that I'm recording this video, it's actually Wednesday night. And on Thursday, we're going to have Anvil come up for uh, IAE sales. So hopefully the Liberator or maybe the Carrick is on War Bond and I can fill this in with a nice little War Bond um, upgrade. Maybe, you know, it's, I don't know, it's been a while. They like the Carrick. Maybe it'll be the Carrick. We'll find out. Um, and then later on, when RSI comes up, maybe I can get a uh, War Bond to the Perseus, right? And I could fill those in. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way. I might, but I have the option. The other thing that I want to point out here, and this is the big one, if you look at the total spent, so I have all four CCU chains here uh, at the very end, I've got their total values. Basically the cost of the ship, the amount of a discount, and what was spent on a CCU. And then it's all total, totaled at the very bottom here. So as you can see, so far the total amount of discount that I have across all of these change is $605. Now, if you add up the value of the ships that I'm looking at, we're, you know, at $1,575. So I spent $970 on CCUs. That's a pretty decent uh, savings right there. You know, we're 
at $605 savings and I have $1,500 in value of ships. Now, again, this, you know, this is taking me several years to get to. And I've been backing the game for well on 10. So I'm a long-time backer, and I am backing the game. I'm not saying that you should go out and spend this kind of money. This is ludicrous money, right? I should have my head checked. Um, but my major point here is that you can do this on any ship. You can do this on a small ship, a medium ship. And the more CCUs that you get for Warbond, the more that you work in to the uh, end goal ship, the more in savings you're going to get. And there have been some pretty outlandish uh, savings that have been done. There's, a, I don't know if it's true, but there's a rumor circulating around that somebody was able to get a $600 Carrick for like 200 bucks or something like that. I don't know if that's true. Maybe it's a little exaggerated, but as you can see, you have the possibility of doing this. You know, there, there's some really good savings that you can make on the CCU game. So I'm going to wrap it up there. If you've made it this far to the end, uh, you're to be saluted because this is, you know, pretty dry and boring stuff. But it will save you money in the long run. Um, so I, I hope I was able to help you out, clarify some, um, you know, issues that you may have had with how CCU works and how you should kind of backfill your uh, CCU chains and all that, at least how I do it. Um, as always, if you have a better way of doing this, if you know any other little secrets or tricks, um, feel free to add them in the comment section below. Always welcome uh, a good discussion uh, when it comes to Star Citizen. And, uh, uh, you know, again, <laughs> this is just an example, and this is what I have that I've been working on for several years. So by no means am I... Um, insinuating that somebody should do this type of CCU chaining that I've got in here. Um, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, well, you know, if you think about it, I should probably be checked into the funny ward here because that's a ludicrous amount of money to be spending on uh, what essentially is pixels. But I am a good believer in the game here. I, I want Star Citizen and Squadron 42 to get released, so it's going to funding. And like I said, I've built this up over almost a decade so I haven't really spent a whole lot of money all at once it's been very little small incremental amounts over a long period of time kind of like when you put into you know money into your 401k same thing next thing you know when you go to retire you got a couple million bucks you know if you've been doing it since you were 18 and that's kind of how this monstrosity of CCU chaining uh, at least for me evolved uh, from the game so uh, hope you get something out of it. Hope you liked the video. If you did, hit that notify, subscribe, share, and, uh, you know, again, add some comments in there. And if there's a, a better way to do it, or if I left something out, because this is pretty long, uh, let me know. Until next time, take care.